Hello, here's your friendly Viking MTG. Um, this time we're going to talk about the Commander 2016 mechanics. Uh, as any um, enfranchised um, Magic the Gathering player knows, every year we get uh, a set of five decks uh, for Commander 2016, pre-constructed decks. And um, yes, we're going to see what mechanics they have. Um, a little warning before uh, you start uh, looking at the video. Uh, I am recording this on Thursday night, so we don't have the full spoiler yet, but we have a lot of cards already. So I think uh, we can safely talk about the mechanics and some extras that could be um, that are right now um, in the spoilers. So um, as you, uh, every year we get um, the five commander decks that have a special mechanic. For example, 2015 we had the experience counter. Uh, commanders uh, 2014 we had the planeswalkers and so on and so on and so on so uh, this year it's no different there's something that changes a little bit uh, how we play commander and this is the four uh, colored um, commanders now um, this has been something that the community has requested for years especially because sometimes you don't precisely want a five colored um, commander to represent the four colors that you're using and I think uh, this was a long time in the coming. Um, obviously, the great problem of this uh, is that uh, usually when you try to design a card that has multiple colors, you have to, to be careful that this doesn't that this card isn't defined by what color it doesn't have. Um, and this is a very hard thing. No? Um, I myself uh, was waiting for these uh, commanders, and, but I am not precisely very excited about them. Now I know that I can take. Um, one as uh, as a commander and finally not have to put my general task three or my sl uh, sliver hive lord uh, to play the four colors i need um however they have nice options here that uh, you can use and pretty powerful ones too no um the one i was most interested in is the one that is the let's say redless uh, commander now uh, sadly obviously this doesn't fill the needs I have because I'm playing an enchantress with those four colors uh, so yes um, they look nice they have beautiful art and they have a lot of interesting powerful abilities however um, yeah they, they will belong in some very specific decks that require these kind of abilities for example the redless one um, has proliferate so most probably you will have something with counters no um, the the greenless one will be the one based for artifacts and so on and so on and so on. Now, uh, the art is beautiful on all of them, that's uh, definite, especially, uh, I especially like the one for Atraxa, uh, painted by, um, by Victor Adam Minguez, someone I interviewed once in, in our show at the very beginning of, of the show of Tapeando Perros, and um, yeah, th this, this looks this just looks beautiful. However, I most probably won't be using any of them because uh, I cannot think at this moment of any way to construct around them. Now we're missing one of them because it, it was not in the spoiler as far as I could see. But yeah, I most probably by Friday when you're watching this, you will have the fifth one already uh, in your uh, preferred spoiler page. Uh, the ones that excite me more though are these uh, planeswalkers that have partner. Uh, partner is an ability that allows you to put two commanders together and play with 98 cards. Um, this is this is actually the way I would have presented the four color commander decks. Um, instead of forcing the four colors on one card, uh, just um, as an introduction, give a deck with 98 cards and two of these planeswalkers making the four colors. Um, I like this very much more because uh, this modularity, as I would call it, no? now that we have modular uh, commanders, um, are much more useful and uh, you can mix up the cards however you want to generate the colors you need. You can easily play uh, two of them of the same color pair, so you have your two colored uh, commander. Um, you can pair up two that share one color. Uh, in this case, you would have then um, some wedge or some uh, shard uh, put together, of which we already have uh, a lot of uh, commanders. However, now with this, you can expand easily into four colors. So I think that one is um, 
very uh, much a very much better way to approach the issue of the four color um, commanders and I like that they included a few of them in each deck so this way um, you can uh, buy multiple decks and then start building however you want in the colors you want and start mixing up some abilities now uh, this obviously will generate a few problems uh, things like uh, keeping track of the commander damage um, also another problem will be keeping track of how many times your commander has died but I mean that's a thing to get used to and well be very organized on how you keep track of those two factors be it on a piece of paper or well differentiated dice no? um, another problem it generates which is just a minor thing is that you will be playing with 98 cards which <laughs> in the case of commander I don't think that's that important um, anyway I like this very much because now you have this model ability to uh, put your commanders together however you want in very different ways. Now these are only three of the many that have been coming out and I think this this was the this for me was the option to generate the four color commander decks but um, well you had to put the flash in it so the, this beautiful shiny cards that obviously many people will want um, but this also um, has made me um, consider to buy more than one deck this year just to have as many of those uh, 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 commanders together these legendary creatures so I could uh, easily buy um, modular cards let's see how the money goes with that anyway um, so I think this option is beautiful, I think it's one of the best. It will change uh, Commander a little bit, uh, just because, I don't know if it will break the spirit of Commander, because the idea is that you have one Commander. However, I think I, I personally like very much uh, the solution they found to generating four-color Commanders. So I could usually, you could, I could easily, instead of getting the greenless one, uh, I could get Ravus and Ludovic. Uh, which was not a big hit, by the way, in the in the community, and put them together to generate a, a let's put quotes on that a commander for a four color deck. No, um, well, that's at least um, how this uh, would start, and I would have more options, for example, for my enchantress deck, uh, for which the four color commander was not precisely the best. Um, other uh, mechanics we have is what well, we return to basic land cycling a very good ability to have at the beginning of the game to precisely uh, be able to fix the mana because having four colors will be very problematic uh, so I think that one that one is a very nice return to uh, another one another way to fix your mana this will be obviously uh, put together with the command tower and other cards that are, are being reprinted um, and yes, I like the idea of including this into the set. Uh, there's not much to say. I mean, uh, older players will know exactly how it works, and uh, I think it's a very good way to fix mana. Um, now, the other ability which I liked very much was Undaunted. Um, the idea of Undaunted is that it can be a very powerful spell as long as you play with many pl with many other players. No, so let's say your usual commander table is five people. You would get a cost reduction of five on these powerful spells. Um, and this way, you can generate a card that is perfect for a multiplayer game and uh, doesn't break any other constructed format, be it legacy, be it the modern. Well, these cards won't come into modern, no? but let's suppose. No? Um, and this way, uh, you have cards that are specifically for multiplayer games. Um, they also scale during the game, so if you get this game when you already killed uh, two of your four opponents, uh, you would only get a two, uh, a two mana reduction, not the complete four, for example. And this way um, you, you have well a scalable spell depending on how many opponents you have. Uh, anyway, by the time you would not get the full reduction, you would anyway have enough mana to uh, cast those spells, so it's not that bad either, no? And it's a nice way to create cards that just won't enter into other formats, uh, especially Legacy and Vintage. Um, okay, 
From there on, there are not many more mechanics, but there are some special mentions I want to make. For example, some reprints like Out of the Roots that is um, that is that required the printings in Slong, and it's a nice thing to see. Um, also, another thing that um, they were they were reprinting as far as I could understand was the filter lens, which um, is needed for the mana fixing, and I think it's a it's another way to reprint uh, these kind of lands. So. Uh, for those who don't have any, well, you at least will get one if you buy one of these decks, or up to five, no? Or unless you want to f buy uh, four copies of each deck, which I think is a little bit too much, no? Um, anyway, these reprints will help uh, to put availability on them. Not so much price, I think, but availability of those cards. Other special mentions are, for example, two cards that interested me very much, like Magus of the Will. Magus of the Will... Um, permits you to play during your turn all the spells from your graveyard as if you had them in your hand. This is a nice drawback to uh, Jogmon's Will, uh, but this time with a parted cost. Um, in this case, it costs exactly the same, but it's first on a creature which does not have haste, uh, so you will be paying like an echo cost for this, and you will have to wait for it to survive for one turn. To be able to do the effect, thus uh, making it much weaker than Jogman's will itself. Now, this this is a very nice reference, by the way. The image is very similar to uh, the original image of Jogman's will, so this is a nice throwback that they did. And I mean, you can always give this creature haste and uh, just play it again. No, but it will cost you a little bit more, and thus. It will not be not that broken. Um, another card that I was looking at, which I like very much and I feel is very powerful, is the Stonehoof Chieftain. Yes, I know it's very expensive, but it's an 8-8 that gives um, 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 the creatures uh, trample and indestructible to share the abilities with Stonehoof Captain. And this is a nice way to attack with, a, I don't know, a big Hydra, for example, me who likes to play with Hydras. Um, give and share with them abilities you need to push that last damage through. So I think there are many new options that are beautiful and also returning mechanics like, for example, flanking, uh, which is not maybe the best mechanic, but it, it brings back memories. Uh, and um, many people already joked on this, uh, saying that maybe they will return banding at one point, which I don't think so. This is one of the most complicated mechanics that Wizards ever created. Um, if not the most. No? Um, well, and finally, to finish off this, I will leave this uh, this blank uh, this this blank page here um, because I want to also talk about the negatives. No, um, if there is a big negative, which is not so much a negative, but more like a little notch to, towards wizards, is that um, what I we have these many um, nice abilities that have been coming out in the Commander Supplemental Products, uh, and many of those are very useful, but um, I haven't seen any of them return uh, at one point, and I would like very much for Wizards to try to uh, reprint these abilities. Um, I say that because, first, uh, we have flanking returning for just one or two cards. Um, uh, th this why? Because, uh, well, Commander is a set where you will have all kinds of abilities, so there is no limit on them, no? Um, secondly, because, for example, with the Partner ability, uh, I think the Wizards could print more Legendary creatures to give more options to the people who want to play and uh, partner up the creatures and create more options, more modularity options. On the different um, on the different color combinations, so I would be very happy to, for example, next year see one or two or three legendary creatures with partner thrown in in one or two decks, um, and this way they would generate uh, generate a little bit more of mass and more options. Um, also, for example, what I'm missing is we have already five Planeswalker commanders, and uh, they are all first monocolored, so. There's not much incentive to play them unless you are specifically playing a monocolor deck or an elf deck, for example, for Freya Elise, which is the one I have. Um, and this doesn't give many options. What if someone wants to play with a, play with a Planeswalker as a commander, but uh, he doesn't want to stick to that only one commander that exists? So printing one or two new commanders in the 2017 product um, that have this type line, this can be played as your commander, would be a nice touch, a nice extra. 
and I don't think it would be too problematic, especially if they could print it. I don't know if that is problematic, but on a two-colored commander, for example, that would be a fantastic way to continue this. No, um, saving it up for another set of five, I think, is uh, waiting too long because obviously they won't print it for the next three to five years. So, so it's. Uh, I want to see some of these mechanics that have been good to the game return, no? maybe experience counters. I don't know how good this was. I mean, I personally didn't like it, but I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two legendary creatures that uh, have this ability. No? Uh, this way you could mix up a little bit more uh, the availability of these kinds of cards, because just having five this is just not enough, no? You want to exploit a little bit more these kind of abilities to have a little bit more of options. And they haven't uh, been very gracious on printing of new cards of, like these. And I think that they would be very capable of trying to create one or two more creatures with partner, for example, every year. Um, I don't know how much the design space for this is, but I definitely think that this could be something like they could manage to give us more options. No? Maybe not so much on the partner uh, side, because we will have a lot of uh, legendary creatures already, but the commanders, I think those uh, need, there need to be more, so we have more options, because maybe I want to play mono green, but I don't want to play with elves. No? Um, Freyalis works very well with elves, okay? Um, or, or something like that, no? So, yeah, I, I think that wizards should dip into the well of the different mechanics they have created throughout the years and try to put one or two or three more cards uh, randomly into any deck. Well, not so randomly. Obviously, they would have to test if the decks play well, which is a great job they have been doing with the Commander Precon decks lately, that they play excellent um, out of the box, no? And uh, you can easily play with them and not be worried too much about the power level and then upgrade them with time. Something a friend of mine has been doing a lot with the Grixis deck of Commander 2013. Okay, um, with this I leave you to it. I don't know what you might think of these um, Commander decks uh, until now and well, by the time you see this it will be Friday at least. So if you, uh, if you have something else to add, go ahead, comment on this. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, you know the usual stuff. And, um, well, I will say goodbye for now and see you next week.